Hello everyone, today we talk about how US Marines are made. We talked a lot about discipline, collective training, individual responsibility. Lately, I've noticed that you're interested in this topic. So, some of you, you know, asked me here and there to start addressing also a bit of contemporary warfare and there will be more of it in the future, but Schwerpunkt focus at least for now is going to be chiefly about medieval ancient warfare, early modern warfare, uh, etc. And today we talk about a corpse that is unique uh, in literally in the history uh, of, of warfare. Right? We, we, don't, we won't talk properly of the United States Marine Corps as such. Historically, we, we can make videos about that. Uh, we talk rather about how properly the men and women in this corps are made. Right, and we're speaking here of continuous exercises, uh, inf an inflexible discipline, an attachment to, to one's rifle that must become similar to that of a lover, and no mercy for those who can't make it. We will see today that there is so much still, of course, in modern training about things we find. Of course, um, all over history, in, in the natural of it is fundamentally the same. They're balanced a, a little bit differently to fit the, politi you know, the, the, the relative political and social standards, but fundamentally there is no other way to create essentially a killing machine, right? That, and there's no other way properly to create a flexible fighter capable of withstanding any physical and mental stress on the battlefield. Always remember from Clausewitz, the proceedings of war are not humane by definition. So there is surely a um, process of dehumanization that you have to input quite concretely in these men and women to transform them into a killing machine. There is no other way. This is not just about the Marines. This is about any kind of military. It's just that the Marines have acquired an, an incredible uh, operational capacity. Right? They're, they're a very large corps, as you know, uh, larger than basically most mm, Western military properly, uh, with uh, a sense of, of, of identity and cohesion that is a miracle, right? In, because in the annals of warfare properly, you cannot keep up this, this large amount of almost 200,000 um, men and women with that kind of military standard together and to be so functional. Right, and we will talk hopefully at some point uh, in in uh, in history how even yeah the corpse uh, uh, was was always sometimes on the brink of being disband disbanded. Right, even great figures like even Eisenhower spoke for you know essentially getting rid of it at some point, but uh, here they they still stand. So how to make a marine? Right, so every year. Um, 40,000 Americans pass through the entrance um, to a um, U.S. Marine Corps training center. These are essentially, uh, it's one twentieth for the officers and the rest as private soldiers, right, and selection. Um, the step that crosses that threshold is not just like any step, but it's a real ceremony. Uh, designed like that and emphasized specifically to symbolize the transition of those men and women from civilians to recruits. Mm -hmm. So the beginning of a metamorphosis that will transform them into Marines of the United States. Uh, as we've seen, this is literally an initiatic uh, right. right? It's, it's, it's always been done in any unit uh, historically. Uh, and this is properly meant to crush the person you were before and create literally another one from scratch right for the sake of war um, in fact 13 very hard weeks um, await for these people at this point um, which uh, will put them to the test and will test especially their moral rather than their physical temper Right, don't think that it's about the physicality in war that properly matters. So we'll see that the physical standards also, you know, inside are relatively broad. But no army in history has ever won because their, the, you know, their members were physically strong. Right? These are delusions for RPG players or whatever. Um, 
what it what all that is designed to is to acquire a moral superiority through training and discipline right the same um, martial uh, arts you know uh, boxing the theater it's it's properly to to spur in them a, a mental aggressiveness that is necessary to go at, go go out there proactive to, to attack right to to throw themselves into the fight and uh, whatever these people this is extremely important not just for the marines but for most you know uh military war to this name um um whatever you may have done right or you may have thought to do to prepare uh for all of this for what it is properly to be a mil part of the military will never be enough to ensure you that they can successfully overcome these this this training right this construction this is properly for any of us that have gone through uh, even a very short uh, military training right has been properly under military discipline you know what happens to your mind when you're brought under that right the, the moment you get out of there you feel as if you you literally belong to another you realize you had some strength that that you didn't know you had before that you can't withstand something that now p what most people do out there just you know slobs with no backbone of, of, of whatsoever that's how flexible and powerful and um unused and misused our mind is right and uh, this is the first thing you have to learn about war is that any kind of speculation about it with no concrete uh, real evidence is useless by definition because you don't have without any other particular expertise properly the moral understanding of what war is right playing video games reading history books or whatever it's it's not enough you have to spend a lifetime of learning about properly what the art of war is not what war generally speaking you wish it can be right and, and then starting to gradually grasp what fundamentally this thing all is and that's why studying the training of the marines is is a very good example as for the one of our corps uh, units what what it what it is what it really means to get in the mid grind and always remember that the, from the day you become a marine right with, you can wear the badge with the eagle the globe and the anchor um they w you will be a marine and the corpse right so you are one with it right the, of course the corpse is superior to the sum of its individuals and this is something that also most people do not understand what, what it means to be responsible for something that is greater than yourself right simply we're taught the, res the reverse most of the times there can't be an effective military unit when you know the single soldier thinks that he is more important than the, the, the sound of the people that that he's into as a group right it, it's madness it's properly the exact reverse of what military logic is right so uh this uh is, is a path that naturally uh, presents you with success failure without which you can't really learn much about life uh, uh, either in general uh, marines candidate must be american citizens or legal residents of the United States with regular immigration and naturalization papers aged between 17 and 35 between 5 feet and 6 feet 8 inches so between 152 to 203 centimeters tall for men and between 4 feet 10 inches and 6 feet 8 inches that is between 147 uh, and 203 centimeters for women and more than weight the percentage of body fat is important right this must not exceed 18 percent in men and 26 percent in women right and the level of education achieved must be at least a high school diploma so once the psycho aptitude tests and medical examinations have been carried out to a certain uh, the their uh, say fit physical fitness their, their health and robustness uh, etc um, the aspiring recruits will have to demonstrate their physical shape 
with various athletic tests, um, pull-ups, crunches, for example, managing to run for three miles, that is more or less five kilometers, uh, within 28 minutes if male and 31 if female. And the results obtained are evaluated with a score that will form the final result of the first selection. And those who fail, however, will not be rejected immediately, but will undergo uh, a, a vigorous additional training to try to pass the test with a second chance. Because, you know, human body can adapt even here dramatically, quickly, with enough exercise to those physical standards. Well, it's not a big deal, right? If you have tried some tests in the military, you know, you, you went running the first day, you, you almost kill yourself. <laughs> then Already in the you know, in the following days you start feeling much more and you do perform well and these are kind of, you know, th this is the least, you know, demanding part of the training, of course. Um, and at that point, only if they further fail, they will be forced to, to renounce, right? Because physical fitness, yes, it's not the most important thing, but, it, you know, you also need that as a necessary condition. And those admitted are... Uh, sent to the so-called boot camp, right, a training camp where they will begin their adventure in the Marine Corps. So the initial phase of the boot camp is called reception and begins as soon as the new recruits get on the bus that will take them to their destination depot. And they are received by a non-commissioned officer who informs them mm, essentially of the code of military justice, that is the, the jurisdiction to which from from that moment on they will be subjected. So once off the bus they are immediately lined up on rows of, uh, of um, yellow footprints painted on the ground to learn to stand at attention. And it is at this moment that many of them will have the first perception of what they will have to face and how hard they will have to endure. The first set of uniforms and um, toiletry uh, are then delivered and then um, they, this is started with, by the military barber. So males will be basically bald, shaved completely. Women will be uh, briefed on authorized hairstyles. So essentially either short hair that, that does not touch the uniform collar or um, the hair gathered in, in a bun. So the, the, the first objective here is probably you go down, you, you immediately feel as you're undergoing someone else's discipline. Right? You are, you, this is, the objective here is already to start crushing your own uh, ego, your own individuality, your own personality, because you have to immediately start to feel part of, of, of the group and of especially perceiving the hierarchy and the power that is above you and that is enforcing you that discipline and that teaching, that learning. Um, speaking of women here, um, uh, you know, it's just for from a bit more than one century um, that the first woman entered the Marine Corps. It was 1918. We're talking about Alpha Mae Johnson, who um, became an administrative employee in the recruiting center, but still properly as a Marine. Right, and at the moment there are about uh, 40,000 women in the corps. That is about a 7% of the total. And in recent years they have won the right to access many, yet not all actually, specialties and positions of the Marines, uh, even the most risky ones, of course, such as the presence uh, in the fighting infantry units. The first woman to obtain the qualification for infantry was, um, as, as a marine, was um, Maria Dom in uh, 2017. This was a remarkable result, especially because the corps has a very high physical standard for this specialty. And only one woman out of four manages to pass the admission tests. Uh, in that regard. And um, the Marines also have no intention of lowering their efficiency uh, characteristic to allow for greater female participation in their combat units. This is important because it's not true everywhere. Um, and in fact, it's uh, literally like when you're under fire, what, 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 what the hell gives about persons, you know, height or size complexes? You have to, to work and get the hell out of here taking it 
you know, having the physical strength to get, a, I don't know, wounded out of, you know, out of fire, things like that. So that's the reality, whatever. And that's why individuals are worthless in front of, of, of the unit. And despite this, uh, some women not only made it, but even became officers, such as, for example, Lieutenant Marina uh, A. Um, uh, Yerl uh, is an infantry officer, and Lieutenant Mariah Klenk, an officer of the amphibious assault unit. Mm -hmm. So that's also for who believes that women are just not made, not cut for, for war. This is actually not true. And what you see in history is, is a broader reason why you, you don't find much of that uh, that doesn't have with the potential, you know, with the female potential in itself at all, mm -hmm. as these examples prove. Um, so going on with the selection, so the, the reception lasts three days, during which the recruits are practically denied the possibility of sleeping. On purpose, of course. So first, I don't know if you've ever been deprived of sleeping. This is just three days, because after three days you have permanent cerebral damage if you haven't slept right in your life. So that is to, to first of all show you to, to, to essentially put these people in a state already of, you know, uh, to be guided, right? To, to passively receive this, to immediately understand who's in charge and the fact that they can't be crushed that easily, right? They are kept busy day and night in numerous activities from bureaucratic formalities to the delivery of the M16A4 ser service rifle, right, from medical examinations and vaccinations um, to uh, endurance tests, so-called, and, uh, and other athletic tests. Mm -hmm. And at the end of this grueling initial journey, the records will be properly, are uh, properly, you know, ripe and re ready, let's say, um, and sufficiently tested to finally have an encounter with the men and women destined to change their lives forever. The instructors. So, normally each platoon of records has at least three drill instructors. That is, a chief instructor, that is the senior drill instructor, um, in, in, in charge of the training, and the first addressing to the records mm, who is recognizable by the uh, black leather belt. Mm. Then a junior drill instructor, that is the second in command, and one or more uh, assistant drill instructors called green belts for their olive green ordinance belts. So all, however, are immediately recognizable by their traditional wide-brimmed hats. In fact, hats is also the slang term that distinguishes them. If before at that time, the commander of the company to which the records were assigned previously had gathered all the instructors under him and made them pronounce the drill instructor's creed. This is the creed of the drill instructor during which they res recite the commitment to transform those records into real marines, right? Even by example, and not to impose on them activities that they themselves would not be able to carry out themselves. This is very important because you don't have to give uh, uh, your your troop the, the minimal uh, doubt that you're you are in charge and you are able to perform exactly what you are demanding to them, right? Because otherwise you would be less reliable. This is also very important because of, um, you know, accidents that happen historically, like in many other units of um, criminal, like excess, essentially violence, abuse, things like these, uh, that are still broadly part of the military in general, because this is a tough, like here we're making it, Kind of, a, but the the here as we will see, there is properly no. I mean, abuse is accepted by a certain degree. It's properly you can't create a soldier otherwise, right? Um, it's just that sometimes it gets out of hand. And um, speaking still of, of the instructors, Lee, as we have seen, we, they are recognizable by the, the wide brim headdress. That this dates back to the models used by uh, the Marines during the First World War, if you remember at least costume um, and uh, for this reason hats is at least one of the slang nicknames they're called by records and their official name is properly drill instructors 
right instructors of the exercises and so you have to address them adding the rank and the surname right and I don't know I think you all have watched Full Metal Jacket right um, with um, Gunnery Sergeant Hartman um, so uh, the the guy was in the movie uh, in the first part the senior drill instructor of the group of um, recruits right and uh, and of course Hartman's character is fictional but Ronald Lee Army that passed away some a few years ago um, uh, if I'm not wrong um, so the actor that portrayed the the character on screen had truly been a marine drill instructor in the past right so uh, he brought his corpse background into his acting with this in fact unforgettable effectiveness and if you if you you know if you have watched the movie you you know the the proper effect that he received naturally ending badly there because of a essentially a mentally disturbed person but still effectively to in an abusive sense a violent aggressive sense um insultive sense for shaping that sense of unity and and, and hierarchy and discipline and obedience towards authority uh, and so on uh, so to to become a drill instructor, you you must attend a special training course, which is considered actually uh, among the, the most difficult and demanding of the Marine Corps. That's how important drill instructors are, because the training of recruits is considered an absolutely primary task. Right? This is the moment. This is literally the moment in which they become Marines. So there can't be any kind of um, flexibility these people have to be the best professionals for that job they are actually selected they must have some some very specific characteristics and they are they're crucial for the marines uh, all together so going on with the training uh, the the first meeting were at, at, at this point that we were describing it was called black is called black friday Right in jargon, this is um, destined to remain forever in the memory of the recruits. Right, first, future Marines will have to get into their heads very carefully how to call, how to address their instructors. Right, and a serious mistake and the cause of immediate punishment will be to address them with the title of drill sergeant, because this terminology belongs to the army. Right, and as you know, the Marine Corps are an independent one. So um, th this is a real insult. So much, in fact, that um, you see, uh, in the same way, the instructor will address the recruits, calling them Marines for private. And if you tell he called them soldiers, he will do so with the specific intention of insulting them, because the soldiers bleh, are only the army. You know, you're you're freaking Marine. So if you want to address drill search you have uh, there are uh, two acceptable formulas that is sir or ma'am or drill instructor followed by the uh, rank and surname of the instructor mm -hmm. so it is at this point that every aspiring marine will uh, feel confronted with the consequences of their decision to enlist in the courts Remember, because you are well, all what you're thinking at that point is that, right? You got yourself into that. You you haven't been called. You you properly decided you want to be that. And you have to demonstrate that. But you know you get in the mid grinder. Now you get the the reason why you start at least the, the first one because this is just you know the the very beginning, the moment which they they can see if you're cut for it or not. Then the training, as we'll see, is much longer. It lasts months, but those first thirteen weeks are everything. In the process and then naturally nothing can substitute that with actual combat experience but the the violence here is, is not low definitely um, so this is naturally as we were saying before it must confirm the records will and determination to themselves right receiving the first taste of how they will be treated in the following weeks um, so the exercise instructors in fact will immediately begin to harass the records physically psychologically mentally right first of all with screams 
and intimidations that uh, even here we, we have seen in many, I don't know, American war movies, for example. I, I got into something similar. We, we in, in my own, when I was in the selections for the Navy, they, uh, in my country, of course, is a different thing, but not quite uh, in, in the essence either. They, 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 they took a, oh, you know, they woke us up in the middle of the night. They made a state for our standing without blinking and insulting us continuously telling that we were slobs, that we were worthless, that we would never make it, that we sucked, that we were disgusting, to be shouted in the face um, and, and insulting, and you couldn't properly move, right? Something you don't know how it's going to even end, right? Whether it's going to happen again. This is, I must say, one of the single most beautiful things that you can ever <laughs> get through. Um, it's like, uh, I don't know, what, because you understand there eventually how it is, and we will explain this also for the Marines, because at, at the end there is uh, almost a reversal of these roles uh, at certain levels, uh, if you make it. But this is properly being harassed, bullied, abused is part of the whole thing. You have to be annihilated as an individual being, right? So, uh, and in, in more practical terms, uh, on the shorter run, it, the, the purpose is to obtain the immediate execution of the orders received, even under stress. This is something that also veterans report, that say they hated their drill instructors, but it's not before they went into actual combat that they understood that what these mm, they, they had done to them was essentially making would actually make the difference between life and death in those moments because if you cannot stand you know a guy shouting at you or or, or beating you or uh, or obliging you to, 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 to essentially torturing you with physical strains how can you even dream to to imagine to withstand a combat situation <laughs> like where you see people torn apart, be, being under fire, being wounded, under any kind of possible stress, right? That's nothing in comparison, actually. Um, and however, for this purpose, that is just uh, the initiatory phase, of course, of becoming a Marine. Um, already, every slightest mistake, inaccuracy, carelessness, inability to live up to the expectations of the instructor will be severely punished. Right? And that's the funny thing, actually, because punishments um, will often be extended to the entire platoon to which the guilty record belongs. Because in principle, each marine must be held responsible for his own fellow soldiers and share their fate. Right, Because these are literally the people that, I, literally better ideally at this point, for how they're going to be redeployed or assigned, whatever, uh, eventually uh, as combat troops, that they have to rely on, they have to entrust their lives to in combat, right? And even in, in the last stage of the, the recruitment uh, of, of, this, of these weeks, um, we'll see how important that is, because basically without these people, you can, you can never make it alone. And the training is designed exactly for that. If you go alone, you fail. So that's how useless you are, if you think you can accomplish even something like, I don't know, carrying a gun or a certain, you know, uh, an artillery piece uh, across a certain amount of, of space. Uh, yeah, and, and maybe uh, as a civilian who speculate how to solve the war problems of the great ones of the universe just by, you know, daydreaming. So um, the world's so-called reception phase is, is made as disorienting as possible right this is designed to be frustrating as hell right to force the would-be marines to take a decisive break with the civilian habits and prepare themselves psychologically for the severe discipline of the corpse that is rough right and the way of thinking and civil habits are properly prejudicial to the purpose of training Right, so during this period, the recruits are annihilated by intense physical training, uh, immutable routines, strict rules, uh, heavy training sessions, right? a program that is designed to uh, teach them uh, to endure and adapt to learn how to survive in combat situations and to understand 
uh, if they have, whether they have the moral temper to make it, right? Because at that point, your brain starts going all around your how how sleepy you feel, how how exhausted you feel. Like you you start properly focusing exclusively on that. You don't have to time you you everything that you have lived before goes back in the back of your mind. You you will resume it at some point. But as long as you're there, you're constantly challenged like that, and you're just fixated with it and to perform, right? And that already, pro and in the group, right? What I hear in the whole thing that the psychology is: what do others do, right? Am I enough, right? Am, am I in line? Do do I work with the others? Because the, as we've seen, the, the the more homogeneous it gets, hopefully for the better, uh, and the more effective it is. So that will also spare you for. From, from punishment and for penalties and reprisals from the side of your of your comrades and all this stuff. So uh, one of the most m important principles that the record must assimilate in the first four weeks in particular is to no longer think of themselves as individuals. This is crucial in war. If you think that in, uh, in war, except from a position of command uh, where you probably, you know, the higher it gets and when you're commander in chief, you can make right, but still knowing what it means to have gone through the thing. But as as a record, uh, uh, even as if you're going to be an officer, but at that point, you're properly drilled as, as a soldier, as an average. Um, and uh, the, the Marines are, have a very specific bias for this, that is, as we will see. Um, there is a, you know, even the officers are properly trained for, for the infantry units drill for combat to degrees um a, a very close um connection with properly even marksmanship uh, as you know etc the relation with their their rifle and so on um but properly the idea is that you don't have to reason as an individual anymore you're not you do not belong you're not a person anymore you belong to the corpse if that's what you want at this point you're still can back out fundamentally but um if you you if you go into it, you know that you in front of the corpse are not something. You're nothing because you exist only within the corpse, right? Um, so for this sake, psychologically speaking, the record is not even authorized to use pronouns in the first or second person, but always and exclusively in the third. For example, he must refer to himself as to as um, uh, this record. Right and perform all tasks in, in a team effort, right as they are brought by the instructors to do. So actions uh, that put, let's say, the the benefit of an individual ahead of that of the group are not permitted, and everyone is expected to conform to a single standard without personalistic deviations or eccentricities. Right, if only most people. In life would get through to these first four weeks we, we surely would live in a world of definitely more intelligent people and this is also not surprising that uh you know at least in the united states i presume it's basically universal the military has uh, a higher iq than the average the, the rest of the population on average so but anyhow um even the speed the intensity and volume of conversations are kept under control. You can't put yourself into that. You can't start acting as if you are the needy one, you're the special one, you have something. No, you have just to obey, right? And speak when you're asked, otherwise shutting the fuck up and nobody cares about that. You're there to prove that you can't take this. Otherwise, you're out of there. You you make you have another life, right? It surely is going to be much better than if you stay in the corpse at that point. Uh, so most of this first phase uh, um, theory content, let's say, consists of lectures on on the Marine Corps, like its history and culture. Um, there is um, other aspect, like you know, a bit of first aid, for example, uh, the, the the structure of the ranks, related insignia, the protocol, the tradition, regulations. Uh, and also performing daily activities as per, per make uh, I don't know ma making your uh, knowing how to make your rack correctly, right? I remember I was blasted at that point because I'm a lazy ass can't even make his bed right. Uh, the uh, the notions must be learned by heart 
right? And each group of records must be able to recite a passage from a regulation or a quotation in unison without errors. That, is, that also makes you feel part of a group. It's as if there was a spirit that permeated you and you were emptied of all what you had before. You now start properly absorbing that. It's fundamental. Being part of a unit, being part of, of, of the elite, by the way. And remember that the corpse comes before anything else. Right. Uh, Truman, back in the day, he also wanted to disband the Marine Corps, for, and he came up with, that was the still Stalin in times in the Soviet Union, said that the Marines had a propaganda like Stalin's. <laughs> he had to make a public excuse for that. But objectively, yeah, I mean, that's part of the training, psychologically speaking, that's very effective. You're brainwashed, because that's how easily you can manipulate a human mind. And, of course, it is, this is done within the limits of reasonable, but still remembering what war gets really down to. These people are trained to be killers. Like, there is no way around. This is not about having something comparable to civilian life, to something that you can adjust, acquiring others. But no, you're there exclusively to kill. And that's obvious, right? You, we shouldn't be we shouldn't be hypocritical about this. And thank God there are people like these because without those we couldn't defend ourselves, right? Um, also, coordinated movement drills are considered of the utmost importance in training records, right? In the first phase, they in fact learn uh, all the basic commands and movements, memorizing the times also through uh, through songs. For example, that help to synchronize them with the rest of the platoon because constant repetition and practice are used to facilitate muscle memory so that each movement can be performed immediately and without hesitation once the order is received. Um, and, and to facilitate this process, the, the, the same movements of the exercises are repeated in many other moments of daily life. For example, a record is instructed to hold his a food tray in the mess hall with, in a similar way to that which he has to uh, to hold the butt of, of, of his rifle. So that it becomes mechanical, right? The human brain is designed properly to, to do this, right? It's not even a matter of doing it over and over again. You know, the training, even these things, uh, at some point, even those guys that are properly go on parades that have to be perfect at a millimeter, uh, it doesn't work like with endless infinite training that can be also harmful but the way it's done in those moments kind of remains like in the memory of you know in your brain it's it's resumed and with the physical mechanism and um and the sound and the attachment the, the whole experience so that's how you properly create um a drill also um during the first phase of the training cycle records familiarize themselves with their rival Right, and he's properly the Marine's pride. Uh, my, say one of the most, one of the, the the many actually, but at an individual level, especially spending long hours disassembling the rifle, reassembling it, and cleaning it until they can mirror themselves in it. In fact, as we were saying before, all Marines, regardless of military specialization, receive a training as a rifleman. And all officers receive additional training as infantry, uh, infantry platoon command. So, uh, instead, they all have the basic small unit tactics uh, as infantry, right? Uh, for for combat, for any kind of combat situation, practically. And, and and this focus on the infantry is matched with the doctrine named as um, like every marine a rifleman is a rifleman, emphasizing the infantry combat abilities of every marine right and they're pretty damn l and legitimately proud of this so while physical training becomes more and more intense because you're literally building the shape of it the, the, the records begin to bulk up their bodies get used to the to the fatigue right so uh, the records are also subjected to the first marches starting from about two kilometers at the beginning uh, with light baggage and then increasing more and more in length and weight of the equipment. Um, periodic tests also evaluate their progress and, and for those with unsatisfactory results personalized training is scheduled. 
this is very important because at the end uh, of the of the 13 weeks if they the marine uh, you know if you succeed um, you, you you become a marine uh, but you are properly provided with um, like with a profile that the instructors have drawn of you for your special attitudes uh, inclinations whatever so to address you to the right um, you know special to, to the right unit so that's that's quite quite important also for selecting the properly at adaptitudinal level since the, the very first weeks uh, we are going to be within within the corps um, then uh, also there are among the various physical activities uh, swimming that it's decisive decisive for not being dismissed there are certain proofs for which you basically if you fail those you have properly to restart the world training since the beginning so that tells you how how important for marines there are as you know the marine corps is born for because these were the properly the marines on on ships like they, they were the essentially the, the land forces brought on ships as security guard for, for the crews right and as land but eventually becoming mostly amphibious forces and being put together but properly the, the connection with properly the amphibious capacity is a prerogative of the marine corps um, and uh, and also martial arts are included these are particularly important as we were saying before in 2001 the marine corps started uh, properly its own martial arts program called the marine corps martial arts program uh, in fact uh, mcmap and aware that the corps would be increasingly engaged in for example peacekeeping operations and therefore forced to deal with unarmed but non less hostile civilians the marines wanted to design a martial art that would meet their specific needs of essentially um, disabling uh, aggressors but without using of deadly force so using their own experiences uh, and instructors the best of martial arts such as jiu-jitsu takevundo karate um, eskrima muay thai have been combined together thus obtaining a mixed um, and eclectic style that is particularly congenial to I mean not just to the Marines but to an armed force in general and in fact um, this martial art of the Marines seems particularly effective right there is a series of practical tests in which the Marines have easily overwhelmed leading athletes of the ultimate fighting championship circuit so th this just about talking reenactment to other stuff that, that exists in the civilian world always remember technique in itself is important but if you don't have the mindset here if you properly haven't gone through the mid grinder you don't know what properly being aggressive to fight and to risk your life to trust it into the hands of another into the hands of another person you don't have the mental capacity these people do not win just because they're, not because they're properly technically superior but because of their mindset everything is worries about mindset bullshit on reconstructions of how they fought in the past aside from the fact that we have no idea just by how they, they made weapons how they use them they combine but just look at at least like these right it, a marine can crush them why right it's a matter of mindset if you live in an environment like the civilian one where the, the pressure is just you know maybe your own ambition a bit of social expectation that, that's 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 bullshit that's nothing compared to even just a few days spent in the military and that's why the military is designed for and that's why it's the, the hell of most rationalistic thing that's ever been created because that makes a difference between people dying or leaving not between winning a cup and being clapped right or not um, so always remember this uh, even from an historical point of view never think that you can just poke at it yourself a bit with for for fun and saying okay ah you know that's how we reconstruct history right and how they really thought yeah yeah exactly slobs from the third millennium you know trying to reconstruct how people fought 1000 2000 years ago um, so the second phase of training is an introduction to combat skills and includes two weeks of shooting training one week on the field and the so-called team week uh, in the first week of the second phase the first confrontation between the platoons takes place right with a series of of, uh, of races and called the initial drill the, the platoon and a drill instruct 
actor are judged as a whole for their performance. So this is actually quite important because it tells you how competitive the same instructors are for the role interest career. So the second week is known as grass week. This week was partly spent um, in, in class to learn under the guidance uh, of a specialized instructor the principles of shooting the M16 and how to shoot effectively. The third week is called firing week and ends on Friday with a qualifying test. So for five days the recruits are taken to the range to shoot against targets at 200, 300 and 500 yards. So in metric system it's 180, 270, 460 meters. In various positions, standing, sitting, kneeling and prone. The Marines are the only corps in the United States Armed Forces to claim qualification for shooting from a distance of 500 yards. As we were saying before, there is a principle of marksmanship for, for any Marine. Um, and the platoon with the best score in the final round received a coveted, coveted trophy. So there is properly an extra reason of competitiveness, uh, competitiveness team, um, uh, you know, teamwork and uh, aggressiveness in general. The last week of the second phase is dedicated to teamwork properly. Recruits are assigned various tasks such as guard services, maintenance and cleaning jobs they, to, to, to give time to their fellow soldiers who have not passed the qualification tests to carry out additional training. Consider that in this in the platoon normally there is always the you know there are specific tasks also in the instru uh, yeah the instructors and trust single individuals like you know, controlling the the, the the whiskey guy you know for controlling the the, the supply the, the the canteen the food and all these things so um, they did they, they already start providing these individuals with with some responsibilities to which they probably have to respond to 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 all group and to the instructor and in turn they work as a team properly with the latter as well um, so this week often ends with a field meet where the um, platoons compete in military sporting events such as a rifle uh, um, assemblage competition a fast run a short marathon an obstacle course and the tug of war which is also fascinating um, the third and last phase is simultaneously a moment of refinement of what has been learned up to that moment and an introduction to the tactics and techniques of combat that will be dealt with in more detail when the record enters the corpse fully. So it begins with the so-called line A. There is a shooting exercise during which recruits learn to use their rifle in more realistic combat conditions, firing, for example, at moving targets and from a, a properly a fighting distance. So the, the following week, we'll see recruits at basic warrior training, also known as field week, where they will learn the basics of combat, sleep in tents, and eat only field rations. So the skills that are taught include camouflage, crawling, orientation, basic team tactics, recognition of explosive devices and traps, and basics of other combat skills. Some of, the, some of these exercises are very realistic with actual fire, explosions, so on. So although, um, you know, it, it, the, the, it has the most up-to-date work technology, is quite important. The Marine Corps pays enormous attention to the human element and expects its members to be able to cope in any situation and in particularly in the absence of sophisticated technological supports. Right? Remember, technology without doctrine is zero. These men have to survive with nothing and they are trained for it. Because real war is not about technology, right? It, it's about much else. Technology is there, is important, but never as important as many other things. And most of these things revolve with your brain, right? Uh, revolve around your brain. The training 
cycle has thus come to its conclusion, right? And everything the records have learned up to this point will undergo the harsh crucible test. Now, this is a thing, really. It's beautiful. Um, it was introduced in 1996. So the crucible is a rigorous 54-hour test that not only requires would-be marines to apply everything they have learned in practice, but also obliges them to collaborate closely. Physical and mental stress, in fact, leads participants to challenge their limits. And without the collaboration, encouragement and help of fellow soldiers, failure is in inevitable. That is, you can't make it alone. Either you, you work in team or you lose. And this will wait on the team itself. And this is where some of the worst things happen, where you, you still can see where collective training is all. Because this is basically a long journey of 48 miles, so these 77 kilometers, right? Um, um, and um, I don't know, there is, for example, I don't know, an artillery piece to, to transport at some point. Um, you can see there the group who makes it and makes it for, for kilometers, the other who doesn't, because they quarrel with each other. So if you're not cohesive, that at a political, military, social life, you, you don't make it anywhere. That's the single most important thing. They're provided all with the same means, right? They are rough, but they probably have to solve the thing by themselves. And they have to take it to the end, because you see, it's not that if you stop, uh, there's a time limit, they're not at the end, they make it. No, you have to do it. You have to make it work, otherwise you, don't, you have done all that, all that abuse, that frustration, that fatigue for nothing. Right, so you must have learned basically all what was necessary to make it in this situation. You were provided with, so if you fail at some point, you can't make it. Now, um, they uh, in this situation, basically, you have um, even properly typical combat simulations with demanding tasks, difficulties of all kinds, and the deprivation of food and sleep. For example, every two records are assigned only three field rations. So you are actually starving at the same time. Uh, you have to spend, uh, yeah, these days, of course, outside, right? And they um, they will have to split their foot. They will, that's the only form of uh, sustenance. And they will ha be able to sleep basically only for six hours. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's exhausting. Like, there are people, you know, properly, like, it must be terrible, like, to, to make it up to the last kilometers and failing, right? In fact, normally instructors say, you know, because they're not told. Sometimes, I don't remember whether that was the Navy SEAL training or it was the, the Marines, I don't remember. But, you, you know, sometimes uh, in some of these drills, they're not properly told. Uh, I mean, this one probably, but in others, that what they prob when, when it stops. So, uh, the objective is is to... Pro, which is strange because this test should be standardized, so maybe they know. But properly, they, they, um, uh, you know, they're not told, right? They, they, they don't, they're not told what to stop because mentally speaking, they have to be prepared to go on, to exhaust you, right? Some just can't, like they have, you know, plagues on under their feet that, that you know, they're destroyed, they're utterly destroyed, cold, hungry, exhausted. Like, well, you can't imagine like that. So the in in this exercise the records are divided into teams of no more than twelve men each, but also they're they're generally smaller. To mm, yeah, and and placed under there because there there is a balance there to properly engage everybody in a satisfactory manner. So y yeah, you want teamwork, but also the instructor uh, that under whom they are placed at that point because the instructor follows them in that regard must properly uh of course they 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 kind of you know instructors go on on wheels uh, uh, following them like that more comfortably and better fed but the um is um you know you you have to also make every individual giving something right the more they are the, the more there will be the one who makes everything right and at this point, especially in, in the team dynamic, there are there is a selection for for the, the instructor's spot, for example, for those who have the more kind of NCO profile, kind of commanding attitude in those moments that naturally emerges uh, in the mental profiles that are, you know, fit in that. 
So each challenge must be overcome by all elements of the team before they can move on to the next. Right? In this way, the group succeeds or fails as a whole and not in its individual elements. The Crucible's ultimate challenge is the Reaper, so-called. So it's basically a long climb up a steep hill, very symbolically, at the top of which the final uh, finish line awaits the uh, recruits and their instructor who will deliver the coveted corpse emblem the eagle crest the globe and the anchor that certify their entry into the marine corpse they will be able to at that point uh, refresh themselves to their fill even eating foods that were previously prohibited such as ice cream, I don't know, and, and finally address their instructors in a less formal way because they are now officially marines. Good job. However, the actual training begins now, right, because the instructors will choose for each recruit a specialization, as we've seen in accordance with the preparation achieved and the aptitudes uh, showed and, 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 and then all will be sent to the destination units where they will spend other months of training in exercises before they can be considered um, suitable for combat in the field. So whatever unit um, they serve in, in fact the, the, uh, the fact that the Marines have gone through the same selection and qualification phase puts all of them on an equal footing and gives them an invaluable feeling of belonging and pride, right? This part uh, is literally what makes them, as we have seen. It's their initiatory right. Third and weeks are, may not seem a lot, but it's really what they did in them that may be, like, sound, surely, the, it is actually the most intense thing they've ever done in their life. So this marks them. It, it's a continuative thing that they will keep memory of. It doesn't get away. Right? It's, it's how they are made marines. The selection also makes spontaneous and natural that interforce collaboration which constitutes amongst the, the you know among the, the, the many it can boast the, the most important element of excellence of the corps. Right? Because it must never be forgotten that the, the United States Marine Corps has around 182,000 marines that is one fifth more than the whole British armed forces, and that bringing them to, to such a level of efficiency and cohesion is a really unrepeatable organizational miracle. Nobody's ever made it. Nobody has ever created a, a corps, an armed force that, that functions like that. Right? It, it, it's incredible in insight, and much has to do with the selection training so and uh, and naturally also the, the rest of the, the experience but that moment is it's properly the one without which you can't have a memory uh, so briefly uh, also for the sake of completion what is the marine corps so if you um, so the United States Marine Corps is organized within the Department of, of the Navy and um, under the auspices of the uh, Secretary of the Navy proper. So the highest ranking officer of the Marines is the Corps Commander, primarily responsible for organizing, recruiting, training, and equipping the Corps. And guarantor that each of his men is ready to intervene at any time and under any circumstances. Because this is properly the, f the, the purpose of Marines. Right? That's, that was created when the United States started going around the globe in the 19th century and they, they needed this combat ready force to intervene, mostly in amphibious operations were still, you know, today most of the world uh, wealth and power, whatever, is concentrated along the coast by an 80%, so th the Americans are the only ones that can achieve certain feats their armed forces, largely also thanks to the Marines' contribution um, and um, and the reason for which the corps has to be always ready, and in fact it's considered properly uh, under the, the direct command of the president as so if he wants, he can't send them 
wherever. Um, and and their their wall deal is that readiness, right? For this kind of aggressive projection wherever to, to fight in any kind of circumstance uh, it requires. Um, Marines are structured into four main subdivisions. So the Marine Corps Command, the Operational Forces, Support Facility and Marine Reserve Force. The operational forces are further divided into three categories. The Marine Forces assigned to Unified Combat Commands, Marine Corps Security Forces guarding naval installations, that is essentially how they were born initially, and Marine Security Guard detachments at the United States embassies. The Unified Combat Command forces are then divided into Marine Forces Command, composed of the 2nd Marine Expeditionary Force and the Marine Forces Pacific, composed by the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force and the 3rd Marine Expeditionary Force. The 1st Force Commander also serves as Commander General for the Atlantic Fleet Marine Forces, Marine, Force, uh, Marine Corps Forces in Europe, Southern Marine Corps Forces, Marine Corps forces of strategic installations and, uh, um, and of the East Marine Corps. Um, the second is um, commander of the Marine Forces of the Pacific Fleet, of the Central Command of the Marine Forces and of the installations of the West Marine Corps. The support facility includes Combat Development Command, R Recruiting Depots, Marine Corps Logistics Command, Marine Bases and Airports, Corps Recruiting Command and the United States Marine Corps Band, right? Which don't have much to do with combat because they basically just play music at the White House in you know in the public, but they they are quite qualified and that's the presidential link as well. Um, currently, um, the basic framework for field deployable marine units also is the so-called Marine Air Ground Task Force is a flexible structure that can vary greatly in size according to the operational needs. So a, a Marine Air Ground Task Force is always composed of four elements. The command element, the ground combat element, the aeronautical combat element and the logistic combat element. A Marine Air Ground Task Force can operate independently or as part of a larger coalition. So it's, it's flexible so long that pattern they they cooperate widely also with, with foreign um, contingents uh, it, it is a um, temporary organization formed uh, ad hoc for a specific mission right and dissolved as such after the completion of the uh, of the mission itself the marine air ground task force structure reflects the corps consolidated tradition of self-sufficiency and commitment to combined arms both essential factors for an expeditionary force that is often called upon to act independently in particular time sensitive crisis situation so they have basically means of any uh, of any kind uh, as we've seen uh, land air uh, water and they and which provides them with also um, an incredible potential in, in um, strategical as well as tactical options that that's why the Marines invest so much in um, also in properly as we've seen not not much in, in, in the knowledge of those technologies but properly in, in the in creating troops the, the officers that are they're flexible enough to be able to integrate them to, to the fullest which is actually what no other uh, things but experience teaches you so uh, the, the Marines' operationality is fundamental in terms of lessons learned and how, you know, and for, for their, their own effectiveness. Also, the Marine Air Ground Task Force um, can um, range in size from the smallest, that is, the so called Marine Expeditionary Unit, based essentially in a reinforced infantry battalion and a composite air squadron to the largest, known as the Marine Expeditionary Force proper, which connects together a reinforced division, a wing, and a logistics group under the Marine Expeditionary Force headquarters. Mm -hmm. And we will keep talking about the Marines, because also probably from an historical point of view, naturally just to see their, their story, you know that, you know, up to the beginning of the 20th century, the Marines were not even, you know, 
that that much. They they rose in importance in, in specifically in World War the First. Think about the Battle of Belo Woods, that kind of iconic against the Germans, but mostly they 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 started to be properly appreciated and identified as the iconic American uh, fighter at, d during World War II because of their amphibious nature for the fact they carried out basically the whole Pacific campaign um, and uh, you know their myth died essentially in Vietnam but with lots of other things I would say and as you know the Marines are still uh, firmly here and the um, proving you know there uh, this 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 exceptional standard of military quality competence uh, uh devotion to duty and uh skill in combat um and so well for now we stop it here i just hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please share it otherwise leave a like or subscribe to my channel if you're interested in my upcoming content and for now, I thank you heartily for listening to me. I wish you a nice time and see you next time. Bye.